Welcome to NetTouch. My name is Jeffrey Way and I'll be your host today. And in today's quick tip, we're going to be taking a look at diagonal lines and shapes with CSS. So yesterday I received my invite to Google Music, which by the way is really, really good. I've been very impressed by it. Anyhow, uh, along the way I noticed their tabs. So if I zoom in here, you can see that they have this diagonal line here. And I noticed that it was slightly jaggy and usually this means they aren't using any images at all they're using a CSS technique to accomplish that so I sat down and figured out how to do it and I will show you how to do it in your projects today let's get started I have a blank slate our final project will be like so very simple but it shows the effect nicely with zero images first step is of course create an anchor tag it's implied that this links somewhere so we wrap it in an anchor and we'll write new music Next, if I preview this, I will split these windows and we can get started on our styling. The first step is the body element. And this is only for layout. It's really not important for the effect. We'll start by giving it a background of E3. We're going to set the font family to sans serif, which will default in all browsers to Helvetica or Arial if it's installed. Next, I'm going to set a width because we're going to be using the body element as a wrapper in this case because we don't have a big project so that's fine and then finally we'll set some margin and we'll push it down from the top and set the left and right margins to auto again this is only for layout now let's get started on that anchor tag very first step is temporarily I want to apply a background color of red next we need some padding around that text 10 pixels worth should do it next we don't want any underline under that anchor tag get rid of it now we'll set a color of white, and we want a font weight, make it bold, or you can specify a number. For now, we'll stick with bold. And we'll set a text shadow, and we'll just add a tiny little black underline. So one pixel down, zero blur, and make the color black. As you can see, that adds just a subtle underline like you can see right there. Now, let's apply some borders, and this is where the effect comes into play. Watch what happens if I set a border right to 30 pixels solid say green and then we do the exact same thing but we switch it to yellow and we adjust the border right to border bottom now as you're probably aware when you have big borders like this and they intersect it creates this diagonal line that you can see right here so maybe we can use that to our advantage too bad we can't take that line and push it all the way up here to make it look like a tab and we can the key is Watch what happens when I set a height of this anchor tag to zero, and that should collapse it. But it's not doing it just yet. So why don't we adjust the display to block? And now, can you see how that jumped up? Let's see if we can work with this. The first step, get rid of that background red. We don't need it any longer. The next step is, notice how this green here? We don't need that. Really, we want that to be the background color of our body. So we can get that by choosing transparent. Okay, good. Now we're starting to get there. We're getting that diagonal line right there. But the text isn't lining up and the color is certainly wrong. So let's do the color first and I'm going to update that to a grayish color. Next, I'm going to apply a line height on this anchor tag so we can push the text down. And mostly this is just trial and error. 36, 45, you can play around with it as much as you need to. 50 pixels looks okay to me right now. But now the problem is this doesn't look like much of a tab when the tab takes up all of the available space. And that's happening because we specified a display of block. So now it's going to take up all of the width of its container. If we adjust that to 200, it compensates. And the same if we go up to 800. So really what we want is the tab to end as soon as that text cuts off. But the problem is if I keep that back to inline, we get that same effect now. But watch what happens when I do inline block. There we go. That's exactly what we need. Good. So now let's create the container. And we'll keep this very simple again. We're using the body element as our wrapper. We'll have an h3 tag that says, hello, everyone. And then I'm going to paste in some lorem text, like so. The next step is let's style it. And again, I'm being very generic. You don't want to style a general div tag. You'd probably want to apply a class. We begin by giving it a border all around of say 4C, 4C, 4C. We're gonna grab that same color that we have here. But now the text is right up against the edge. Let's give some padding, 20 pixels all around. Now, let's save that right now and view this in Chrome and Firefox. First, we have Chrome, and I want you to notice that there's a slight space right there. 
Okay, keep that in mind. And next we come to Firefox and it seems to be perfect. So these are slight inconsistencies in the way that modern browsers treat some of these neat tricks. But before we fix that, let's come back and notice how underneath this tab, it looks like there's a dark underline that makes it look a little more realistic. So why don't we add that in as well? I'm gonna come back to Espresso and this time I'm going to add another border but this time to the top, we're going to make it a little more emphasized, like you can see right there. And now if I return to Firefox and refresh the page, that's starting to look really good. And if we view it in Chrome, again, we have that space here. And that can be a pain in the butt because you can play around with it and try to figure it out. And if you can find the reason for that space, let me know. But then you might be tempted to say, okay, well, let's just pull it up a little bit. I know I've done this myself. And now that looks much better as you can see right there. But of course the problem then becomes in Firefox, now we've screwed that up. So how can you fix something if you can't find the reason for the spacing and if you make one change, it works in a browser but not in the other browser? Generally, you need to be very careful about targeting specific browsers. This is generally a no-no. Now I'll show you a technique of how to target WebKit, but I want you to keep in mind that this would be a method of last resort. So I'm partially doing this against my better judgment. I don't want you to always rely on this. It's a very last resort, but it's a neat effect that you should know anyhow. Watch what happens if we use media queries. Media, what is this for? We'll set it to screen, though we could remove it. And within parentheses, we're going to set our terms. So if we want to declare that we only want to target WebKit browsers, it's as simple as targeting a property that is specific to WebKit. In this case, I'll use WebKit animation. Now, watch what happens if I set body background red. That's being applied there, but if I come back to Firefox, we're not getting it because this is failing in any browser that is not WebKit. So if we really wanted to be lazy, we could then apply the negative four pixels to that anchor tag, as you can see right there. And then we can remove it from up here. And that means it looks good in Chrome. And if we come back to Firefox, it looks good there as well, though we might want to adjust the line height ever so slightly. We'll pull that up to 56 pixels, and now that's looking really good. So again, this is a really neat technique to have in your tool belt, but I don't want you to always rely on that. This is a method of last resort, because what happens if Chrome fixes this in the next version, assuming it is a bug, then you're still targeting it, and you might be messing up the layout. So this is good to know, but only, again, use it in a case of last resort. All right, so that is our simple effect. We use CSS to create shapes, and we also took advantage of the display inline block property. For more tips and tutorials, always, always visit NetTouch. You can subscribe to us, follow us on Twitter at Envato Web Dev, which I run, or come say hello on Facebook.